Hi, I'm Robert Willsmore, and this is Collaboration, a brief introduction to Vera John Steiner's Patterns of Collaboration. These four patterns come from uh, a book called Creative Collaboration. Uh, it's actually my favourite book, which I refer to a lot, particularly in terms of the types, and so that I can apply them to situations that I'm looking at whenever I'm doing an analysis of a group. I've got these four types in my mind to see what different aspects apply to the to the group. It's never just one, it's usually more than one. So here we go. Vera John Steiner identifies these four collaborative types. Um, I'm going to sort of outline them here and list them and put them in a table. Actually, very helpfully in the book, um, she puts them in terms of this very fluid circle really just to say that they're not closed off categories, uh, they do kind of melt into each other. So um, when you use these, when you apply these, don't necessarily think of putting people into these pigeonholes, but think of these kinds of characteristics um, that might be at play within any one situation. It will, be, it will be more than one type, it nearly always is. So here's the four types. Distributed, complementary, family, and integrative. And these are described and each has uh, descriptions in terms of the role. So there's like a, a role title which describes what the role is. Then the values of the collaborative group, what is it that, that they share? And then of course how do they go about doing the collaboration? So these are very brief descriptions but by saying the role and its sort of title and the values of the group and how they go about it we get a, a good picture quite quickly of these various different, different methods in which collaboration occurs. So with distributed collaboration we find that the role is informal and voluntary a sense of people um, going in and coming out as and when they want to rather than them being um, told to do it, commissioned to do it, etc. And why are they coming in? Because their values are, they've got similar interests. They're feeding into this collaboration because they have an interest in it that the rest of the group has. And how do they do it? Well, the method is spontaneous and responsive. So they might respond to what someone has done and contribute to it. Um, so it's perhaps less planned, less formal. So distributed is a very sort of wide practice in the way that people feed in and feed out of that. In terms of complementary mode, think of how things are, are complementary to each other. It's the best way of thinking about this. So in terms of the role, things are divided. There is a clear division of labour that is kind of going on here. Everything complements e e each other. People are specialists, perhaps, in what they're contributing. But their values need to overlap, so they can't be at, at odds and going different ways. They need to have a sense of a shared value uh, with regards to the direction that they're going and what they want to achieve for it to be successful. And of course, its method, well, it's discipline-based approach. So each, uh, each contributor might have their own particular expertise, discipline that they are contributing to. So you maybe think of it in terms of um, kind of the expert feeding into one part and then different experts. So that might be the composer, the, uh, the dancer, uh, the lighting technician, etc. Each has got their own speciality that they are feeding in. Moving away from that, um, family collaboration is where things start to get a little bit more fluid. So the roles are uh, fluid in how they can cross over. Uh, it's not as fixed as complementary. It may be a bit like that, but people will start to move and take on different uh, aspects of the collaboration. So in terms of the values, there's a common vision everyone's working towards, but there's trust too, particularly if people are, are moving across the disciplines and the way they contribute. It might be that um, there's a sense of, with complementarity, territories that are going on here. You might be people moving across those territories, and that's fine. Everybody trusts each other to do that. So it's starting to become a little bit more integrated in this sense. And hence the method is a dynamic integration of experience. So dynamic meaning that fluidity, that changing uh, as you, people might move across different roles that would be quite separate in a complementary fashion. And then that leads to this, this mode, this in integrative mode of collaboration, whereby things become so uh, crossed, enmeshed, intertwined that the roles are braided. 
this tends to be um, attributed to those collaborative groups that have a visionary commitment to something really new, often quite uh, groundbreaking in, in how the, that they work. And that, of course, means that their methods are transformative. They're co-constructing, but things are moving, shifting, braided, fluid, uh, to the point whereby something is, is transforming, perhaps something new is coming to light. So if we put those alongside each other, we can start to see, um, moving from left to right, how these things move. So we've got distributed, then complementary, then family, then integrative. If we look at the role, we can see that this moves from informal and voluntary, into divisions of labour, into fluidity of labour and fluidity of roles, and then really enmeshed, embraided roles. Then we look at the values, we move from people who have similar interests to uh, values that overlap. And then that gets kind of tighter in terms of having a common vision and everybody trusting each other to this really visionary commitment towards uh, a movement then how do they work? Well, we start again at distributed, where things can be responsive and spontaneous, according to people wanting to feed, just feed into something that interests them. Then to the more complementary mode, which has a discipline-based approach, whereby people do what they're best at, generally speaking, contribute that to the project. Then in family mode, it moves to integration. It's dynamic, it's fluid, it's not as um, bordered as the, dis as the disciplinarity of complementarity, and then to the point whereby the working method just becomes co-construction, braided, visionary, and transformative in the way it works. So there we go. Um, four patterns of collaboration, distributed, complementary, family, and integrative. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.